Hey guys, James here, and I just flew into New Zealand uh, from the USA, from Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, there are some strict restrictions here in New Zealand based on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that's going on. So I want to talk you through what exactly happened on my way here to Auckland, New Zealand, and what's going to be happening to me over the next 14 days. Are you in for a treat? So I uh, left Nashville yesterday, or the day before that, I can't remember, all the time zones are so mixed up. But I went to Las Vegas and then I went to LAX. LAX is where everything started for me. It was craziness, because LAX was empty, it was airy, it was eerily, scarily, eerily, scarily, there. There was no one, it was like a ghost town. Every shop was closed, or all or, or the restaurants were closed. The only restaurant that was really open was Panda Express, and no one wants Chinese when they're about to get on a plane. It makes everyone so gassy, everyone knows this. But I digress. In LAX, one of the trippiest things that happened to me was that I was one of the only people in the security line for an international flight. Like, I walked in, there were 10 TSA agents, and me, and they just, kind of walked me all through the thing. I had the whole security place to myself. Uh, LAX was shut down completely. I walked through LAX and then kind of sat there for two hours not knowing what to do because the place was empty. No, there was nowhere to go, nowhere to hang out, uh, no shops to browse. Can you even imagine? They're not even a bookstore where I could just read books for free without buying them. What's going on, America? Then I got on the plane. The plane was empty. I had a whole road to myself. Most people had a road to themselves, unless they were with their families. And we flew 12 and a half hours to New Zealand. Now, when we landed in New Zealand, it was wonderful because they had said to us, hey, can everyone that's going to Brisbane, Melbourne, or Sydney, please get off the plane first. Uh, they would like to transit you. I don't know what that means, because, uh, you know, as you're going to a penal colony, it's not a penal colony. So... About half the plane left, and they went with these police officers to go into transit, which left the other half of the plane, which there weren't that many to begin with. This is kind of what happened when I got to New Zealand. I, I walked out into customs. They stop you first of all, and they ask you all these series of questions. Have you been in contact with anyone with COVID-19? Uh, have you had flu symptoms or anything like that? Can I take your temperature? And they took my temperature. They took it, they take it in your ear. So they took it in this ear, no reading. They took it in this ear, temperature's normal. So this ear, I'm not too sure about, but we're not gonna talk about it. They let me go through. I walked through that whole process. Uh, I picked up my bag, just as easy as I would. There's nobody there. I went through the final customs uh, checks, and then I got ushered out, and I was about to you know, call my wife and make sure everything's okay, say, hey, I'm here, I'm just gonna hang out, because usually I'd go into the terminal, you can go get some food or anything like that. Everything's shut down. The airport is absolutely closed. You get ushered out and there are three buses waiting for us. It kind of felt like I was in like a minimum security prison. This is what it would feel like, like I'd done tax fraud or something, but something very, very minute, but I'd got caught. Something like that. So I went on the bus. I was the only one that I knew of that had the foresight to go, where are we going? Because in New Zealand, there's, uh, you get, there's uh, government-mandated hotels where you can go and you're going to go stay for 14 days. You have to stay in isolation. Whether you have COVID-19 or not, you have to be locked down. Now, in New Zealand, some of these hotels have just been full. They've just got too many people. Everyone's returning back to New Zealand. So they've been ushering them to uh, other places like Rotorua, which is three hours away. So I didn't want to go three hours away. So I, I, I had the, force, uh, the foresight to go, where am I going? And they said, you're going to the Pullman Hotel. Called? Pullman Hotel uh, in downtown Auckland, 25 minutes away. Brilliant. So they bring us down here, and this is what happened. I got here. We had a Ministry of Health representative come up and, and talk to us about what was going to happen, how we were going to enter the hotel. We got our bags. We entered in. I, I got checked in. And then I went to a police officer, and they had to find out where I was going next once the, this uh, lockdown had finished. After that, I had to go to a, 
nurse and I had to fill out some information on what medications I had, uh, what allergies I had, uh, any sort of symptoms I had. After that I went to a member of uh, the hotel staff who told me what I can and can't do. Uh, they have an exercise area, they have a, uh, a smoking area which you can actually or anyone can go to, maximum of 12 people, all sorts of things like that. And then they supply your breakfast and I did get breakfast. After 8 o'clock I got this. And then I also got lunch, I got this. And then in my lunch I received this document and I'm going to read it to you. Dear guest, through our testing process we have received one positive test result and are taking precautionary measures to ensure the health and safety of all our guests blah blah blah. We ask that all guests please remain in your rooms while we work through these steps and update you next blah blah blah. The exercise area has now been closed until further notice and the smoking area has been restricted. Three people maximum will be allowed in the area with restricted time. These restrictions will remain in place until contact tracing has been completed and further updates are given. So I thought I might have some wiggle room to be able to leave and go down to the lobby and hang out and get Uber Eats if I wanted it and they bring it and I can go down and collect it. Someone tested positive here in this hotel. I don't know who, I don't know how, I don't know where they are. They could be next door, they could be on another floor. Uh, but we are now confined to our room. So I want to use this time to update you on my life in quarantine in New Zealand, if you're up for it. If you're not up for it, don't worry about it. But this is what's happening to me. Also, my wife has given me an envelope a day that I get to open, so I'm going to have a special segment called Open That Envelope. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've already opened this one, so this one came, actually I'll show you what was in this one. Oh, she's wonderful. It came with a note about how much she loves me and misses me. Came with my journal because I forgot to pack my journal and a journal is super important so I like to write in my journal about all the things that uh, come into my mind, things that I'm thinking about. And then she packed this thing called a pocket size Sudoku uh, puzzle book which pocket size, come on really, what kind of pocket is this? Like the 90s like baggy jeans pocket probably uh, but nothing but I've never done a Sudoku because they thought they were always for just brainy people with high IQs but I'm gonna try it and see if I can actually do one and she packed me four um, mechanical pencils because um, she obviously wants me to write a lot of things and do a lot of things and make sure the Sudoku puzzles work so I'll be doing open that envelope every day and I'll be showing you all the food that I'm getting I mean I put my menu out the food here is gonna be pretty rad I mean, and for anyone asking, I don't pay for the hotel room, I don't pay for the food. This is something they're making me do, so they're paying for it all. Uh, other than that, I'll just keep you updated on my life, my shenanigans, in this room. Do you want to see this room? Let's take a look. So far, you've seen this. This is my king size bed. Uh, that is a uh, picture of a statue of some sort. Uh, over here we have a chair. This is where I'm going to do some meditation stuff. Um, not likely. This is a mirror. Hello mirror. This is my workspace here. I've got a little keyboard where I play my music. Um, out here I do have a, a view, a slight view. It's not really going to expose right. But I can see the harbour over there. I can see water. So I do have a slight view over there, which is not bad. Um, right here I have the cricket on, because cricket will play uh, the whole time that I'm in here. Um, coming in here, this is the bathroom. Uh, once again, it's got a mirror, which is great. Uh, it's got a whole plethora of things here. Uh, a basin, a toilet. This was a perk that I didn't know was going to be here. Slippers. So I'm going to use these slippers. Um, Something that happens in New Zealand a lot is that they have this glass window here and no glass window here for the shower. Um, I don't know why they do that because I'm a rough shower haver and so all the water just sprays out but regardless it's fine. And then one of the cool things here is that when you're on the, on the toilet, not to be crude or anything like that, they have a phone. Hey mum, <laughs> you don't know where I am weird but you know not unnecessary quite a large wardrobe can't see it's too dark I'm not turning a light on um, 
And so I'm going to uh, just give you always updates on what's going on and how they're going on. Um, the funny thing was I did shoot this whole sequence uh, before and it was weird because every time I walked past the mirror I didn't have any pants on so I put pants on and reshot it. So you're welcome. Anyway, see you tomorrow. <laughs>